So in this episode of Texas, I'm going to be talking about the impacts that underspect old and slow technology has on your productivity in the workplace. Welcome to Texas, the show about helping you to get the right technology and cybersecurity in place to enable your business to be more safe and successful. I'm your host, Mark Riddell, Managing Director of M3 Networks. Over 140 businesses across the UK use us to put an end to staff complaints about frustrating IT problems. So let's start by all agreeing on one thing. Slow computers and slow technology in general is incredibly frustrating. There's nothing worse than having to come in on a Monday morning, turn on your computer, go and make a cup of coffee and chat to everyone in the office while you wait for your computer to load. And then it's even worse if it's 4.57 on a Friday and you're trying to get things finished so that you can get off on holiday with your kids at the weekend. So if you're a business owner listening to this or an IT decision maker, you're going to learn why investing in the right technology for your team is super important when it comes to productivity in your business. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I came up with the idea for this episode. And one of them was that I read an article not that long ago that talked about why some workers were ready to quit their job because their workplace had bad technology that just made their job harder and more frustrating. And they just got to the point where they felt that they didn't want to work there anymore because of that. Employees can see if their employer is investing in the right technology in order to make their job and their work life better. And the second reason that gave me the idea for this episode was that I am starting to see a lot more of our customers at M3 Networks invest in higher end tech such as Apple MacBook Pros. And I'm not sure the reason for this, if it's just because people want to give their employees a better experience or they realise that investing in higher end kit does last longer let's be honest a macbook does outlive a windows machine maybe it's because some businesses are hiring a younger workforce now and those gen z may be expecting to have higher end kit nicer things like macbook pros and ipads to work from because at the end of the day you kind of have to give the people what they want and that's why we've seen flexible working, working from home become the norm because the new generation of workforce expect these things just like they might be expected to have better technology to use. So a moment ago I just mentioned that I'd read an article that talked about this and to give you a couple of stats from that article it said that before the COVID-19 pandemic almost a quarter, 22% of workers said that they had already quit a job in the past because their workplace tech made their job harder. And the second survey showed that almost a third of workers, 32%, say they have said goodbye to an employer whose tech was a barrier to their ability to do good work. And almost half of workers in the US say they are likely to leave their current job if they're unhappy or frustrated with the technology they use at work. So having the right technology isn't just about efficiency. Investing in up-to-date technology It's not just about having fancy gadgets. Yes, of course, it's nice to work on a nice, shiny MacBook Pro. I do. It makes using a computer a pleasurable experience. But it's about investing in productivity, creativity, and overall job satisfaction for your team. Of course, it is tough times. We've had incredible amounts of inflation this year in 2023. And it's not easy for any business just to go out and splash the cash on new tech. I get that. Okay, but the reality is, is that the cost of IT and computer equipment went through the roof during COVID and that hasn't changed. You're paying far more now for an equivalent machine than what you would have three years ago. So the costs are not coming back down like we probably predicted they were going to after things stabilized after the pandemic. It looks like higher technology costs are here to stay. So there's no point sitting waiting for prices to come back down. There's not going to be an ideal time to do this other than that you want to make sure that you have things in place before they cause you a massive problem in your business in terms of either losing great staff members because you've got not got the right technology in place or they're frustrated or it starts to cause you productivity problems within the business. Now, I did say that this episode was going to be for the users out there and I was going to share some compelling reasons 
to why you can go to your boss and ask for that shiny new upgrade. So we're going to get started with a few of these and give you some examples of things that you might want to tweak and say into your own words. It's essential that, of course, you approach the situation with some clear benefits for both you and for the company. So here's some key points that you might want to consider. Productivity and efficiency. So, hey, I've noticed that the speed and performance of my computer slows me down. And with an upgrade, I can accomplish my tasks more efficiently and I think I can save X amount of hours per week. What about cost savings? If we upgrade now, we might avoid more costly repairs or downtime in the future. Plus, newer computers tend to have a longer lifespan. There may be a new piece of software that you want to use that your current machines just aren't going to cut it. So, hey, here's the latest version of this whatever bit of software that we use that has features that we can use to improve our projects, but it requires more modern hardware to run it than we currently have. Or... We could run it, but it's probably going to run crap and we don't want to bother installing the upgrade. You can talk about employee morale and satisfaction. I've touched on this already in this episode. You know, having up-to-date equipment can really boost morale and job satisfaction. I mean, I talked about the fact that I've just switched back to using a MacBook Pro and I really enjoy using a computer again. It makes the day-to-day experience much better. If you're going to use anything for, you know, six, eight, ten hours a day, then you want it to be something that's enjoyable to use, right? So having tools, the right tools to support your role can lead to much greater employee retention. What about if your machine's crashing all the time and you're really slow? You could say something like, hey, you know, I've experienced like five crashes in the last month on my computer and every time this happens, it disrupts my workflow. Potentially it could lead to data loss. I don't know if it's going to turn back on again and it's really caused me a massive issue. In fact, it's impacting the job that we do for our customers because I'm now having to let our customers down because of bad technology. You could really take this a step further and actually track the amount of time that you spend waiting for things to happen. So if you do have to turn your computer on in the morning, go and make a cup of coffee, then track the time and actually say, hey, look, on average, this is how many hours I'm losing per week, per month, etc. of unproductive time that you're paying me for that I can't do work because this bit of equipment is just not fit for purpose. And then the one that would make the biggest impact to me as a business owner is the impact on clients, which I've talked about a little bit already, but the client perception. I'm sure whatever you do, you're not the cheapest at doing it, right? And your clients are probably know that too. And people are quite happy to pay good money for good service. But if your clients think that they're paying a premium, but then you're skimping out on the technology and you don't have the right tools in place, then... It's not a great perception, especially if you're a business where clients come in and visit your premises and they see the equipment as a reflection of your business. And the worst thing you can do is when you're on the phone to a customer and we've all had it when you phone call centers, right, where they say, hey, oh, I'm really sorry, but the computer system's running slow today. It's not a great reflection on your business. It might be perfectly okay when you call a big call center because no one really cares. We all know they provide a pretty bad service anyway, but... If you're a smaller business and you are focused on providing the best service you can to your customers, it's not great when your team members are having to sit there and just make up stuff while they're on the phone or tell customers that, hey, our computers are on the slow today. It's not a good look. And finally, if you've been in the business for a while, you might have one of the older computers in the business, right? And you might be seeing the new staff coming in, the new hires that are getting all this shiny new tech, the latest MacBook Pros and everything else. And you're sitting there with a five-year-old Windows machine thinking, hey, why am I not getting that stuff? You could just say, hey, I've noticed that some team members have more recent stuff and they seem to be getting on much more efficiently with their work. And hey, I just think it's fair that all employees have kind of a level playing field so we can overall boost our team productivity now hey that might not cut it you may just get told to you know keep quiet and get on with the kit that you've got but hey it's worth a shot right now if you are a business owner or you're the person that makes decisions on buying it within the business quite often that could be an office manager role maybe the finance director that deals with this so if you are one of those people either involved in running the business or making decisions then here's some things that you might want to consider when investing in new technology it 
first up, I just want to tell you a little bit about the IT Services Buyer's Guide that we have. This is a free document on our website. You don't have to enter any information to get access to it. You just need to head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash buyer's guide and you'll be able to click the link and get the download. And this is going to give you loads of information to help you understand the questions that you need to ask any potential IT partner in your business or indeed just go back and ask these questions to your existing IT company and then you can help find out whether you're being served correctly and whether there's any gaps in the IT support services that you are being offered. Now, let's get back to the episode. So if you are one of those people either involved in running the business or making decisions, then here's some things that you might want to consider when investing in new technology. We've kind of touched on this already, but decreased productivity using outdated or underpowered techs can significantly slow down operations within the business. Regular software crashes, slow processing speeds, lack of integration can lead to delays and generally grumbles within the team. And of course, that leads to increased frustration. And nothing is more demoralizing for your employees than computers that constantly freeze or pieces of software that just not fit for purpose. And of course, staff have incredible pressures on them just to kind of get the job done and do the best work they can. And they're sitting there using tools that are just not the right stuff that they need to do the job properly. Next up, we have to talk about security vulnerabilities. Now, we've seen countless examples in the past that I'm not going to go into in this episode where using outdated tech can often lead to security problems. And if you don't have the latest tech or at least up-to-date and supported tech, then you're putting your company at risk of cyber attacks and data breaches and malware and all these things. It's all obviously puts both the company and employees at risk because if your company doesn't recover from a cyber attack then employee jobs are at risk too so your employees really want you to take this seriously because they've got to think about their own job security as well which is super important think about your competitive edge in your market companies that are at the forefront of their industry are often there because they are investing in the business and that includes investing in the latest technology advancements. And falling behind in the tech race means that your company can lose its competitive advantage. Now, I'm not saying you just buy technology for technology's sake, and I'm definitely not saying that just by buying the best technology means that your business is gonna be even more successful. Of course, it's about a strategy and ensuring you have the right technology aligned with your business so that you can become the best at what you do in your industry. Now, I've already touched on my next point, but that is higher staff turnover rates. So as job satisfaction decreases due to things like inadequate tech tools, employees might start looking for greener pastures, right? So companies that don't invest in tech often see higher staff turnover rates. So this can lead to a constant cycle of hiring and training. Of course, that has a massive cost and time implication for any business, right? Especially just now, I don't know about you, but it's really difficult hiring people at the moment if you want to make sure that you retain your good team and good staff that you have right now then you should really consider make sure that they've got the right tools in place so that their job satisfaction is as high as possible because we all know by now it's not just what you pay someone that is what they take their job satisfaction for there's much much more that you've got to consider these days And by hanging on to old technology for too long can actually increase your operational costs because, think about it, if you're not upgrading your tech, outdated systems can lead to inefficiencies that cost more in the long run just because your team aren't working as quickly as what they can. And what about downtime from having to pay to fix things? Are you just putting sticky tape and plasters over the cracks just to try and keep your old tech running? Think about those things and think about how a new technology and new systems can eliminate downtime, eliminate inefficiencies and actually make your business run the best it can. And finally, I actually just wanted to share a story with you which isn't actually anything to do with technology but is directly related to the point that we're trying to make in this episode. My little brother is a joiner and I remember a few years back, can't remember when it was, if it was probably before COVID, 
and he was hanging a door in my house and he said you know hanging a lot of doors for people and some people complain about the cost of hanging a door because to them you just screw the thing to the door frame and it opens and closes and things they don't understand really what goes into that and I think if I remember he said yeah typically we'd charge say it was £80 to hang the door and he's like what people don't realise is that the reason that I can do it for £80 and the reason that I can do it as quick as I can is because I'm using about £2,500 worth of tools to be able to do this job if I was to use manual tools he said it would take me three times as long and so people just don't realise that I'm investing in all these tools in order to be able to do quick work and high quality work so that when they see the door hung in their their house it's got the perfect gap all the way around the hinges don't squeak it opens and closes properly it doesn't scrape the carpet at the bottom you know it's a quality job but they just don't appreciate that because they think ah just hanging a door just screw it up and it's fine but it's what goes into it and that is a good example of kind of what we're talking about here having the right tools are also nice to use my brother uses high quality tools because he's like well i've got to use these tools every day i want to use tools that are nice to use that feel nice in the hand that my nail gun doesn't jam up all the time it just works right and it means i can just get on do my work not get frustrated and i can actually turn out high quality work because i've got the right tools to do the job so that's just a wee story i wanted to share that i had in mind when i was thinking about this episode that kind of sums up what we're talking about in general here so hope that gives you kind of some food for thought and finally to wrap up this episode i just want to say that i'm actually quite in a fortunate position here as a director at m3 networks and that we have a great group of customers that really see the benefits of everything i've been talking about they see the benefits of investing in technology to help make their business more successful they see the benefits of ensuring staff have good tools that don't frustrate them that don't make them worse at doing their job and it's a real pleasure to work with businesses that actually see technology as a great enabler for their business on a day-to-day level but also in the bigger picture in terms of making their business more competitive in their market so i really enjoy working with businesses that see technology like that i have had the experience over the years of working with businesses that didn't see technology like this who did cut corners who did want to buy the cheapest thing all the time and needless to say we don't tend to work with any of those businesses anymore so it's really nice to see businesses out there that see technology as a tool and as a great enabler and not just a cost of having nice shiny things nice shiny things are great but ultimately these things are all tools that can massively improve your business if you just have the right strategy and you have the right attitude towards IT and technology. If you'd like a quick chat with me about anything I've discussed in this episode or you have a specific question about any aspect of your IT or cybersecurity, you can book a call in my diary. Just head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash meet Mark. And finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to follow or subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app for future episodes, where I'll dive deeper into other IT and cyber related topics. Texas is an M3 Networks podcast. Find out more at m3networks.co.uk. Okay. Okay.